Good morning, folks. We continue having to watch the sun for eruptions and radiation storms. We've got an exoplanet update, climate news, where to find a good Yellowstone discussion, and more. Let's begin over at spaceweathernews.com. We're finding the last 24 hours were relatively calm on the Earth-facing portions of the sun, even if top left, incoming group looks angry. Compare that to the brighter areas departing to the right. These sunspot groups never got it together and were silent while facing Earth. Activity expected after they turn away. Meanwhile, the incoming group seems eager to dance. We've been eyeing those umbral magnetic field loops for a couple days, and now the sunspots are finally just visible this morning. Activity is beautiful in 304 angstroms as well, but don't forget about the thin snake-like ropes of plasma facing Earth today. They are in Earth-directed CME position for the next two days or so, and present as high of an eruption threat as a large firing sunspot group. Solar wind remains in calm trend now. Got more of this likely today along with radiation storms at Earth. We are starting today at level 1 radiation storm of electrons, so jumping up to level 2 today is not unthinkable or even unexpected. Mostly a satellite and technology concern. Same can't be said for the coronal hole. Yesterday we noted the earthquake watch and it is now peaking for 36 hours as the northern coronal hole faces us with Mercury set to dance behind the sun in conjunction and CMEs ready to couple with Earth. Top lithospheric event yesterday was a volcano going off just south of Japan. Hopefully that released the pressure we noted building there. Top stories begin here. Folks, they are tallying up the small exoplanet size distribution. And folks, if you count them up, they are noting about one small rocky exoplanet per star. And that's before we get into the gas giants. Folks, we've got the global May climate update, except as always, the global warming bias version of the chart is the one you'll see across the net today because journalists don't seem to check to see what the difference is. One is real and the other reduces the blue areas and turns them white while over reddening regions that do not bear out in the data. Just compare the color from chart to chart and while orographic macro structures and rivers might actually make for slight differences on a micro scale, you would need to zoom way in to see them. One of these offers a realistic survey of the last month. One of them serves another master. Anyway, folks, tens of thousands of you know Yellowstone's yearly uptick is here, and so here comes the fear-mongering, and here we go once again with the facts. But this time I popped over to Suspect Sky's channel and did a little interview with him on Yellowstone over there. Folks, if you somehow need Yellowstone information, I recommend you add that video to your list for consideration. Strongly recommend. I also recommend connecting with us on Facebook. The page looks like this and is linked below. We do giveaways, post breaking updates midday when something big happens, even post family shots sometimes. Folks, in the U.S. tonight, we've got the coast of the Northeast taking a strong convergence while that tropical system will reach the Gulf Coast with its rain very soon. Eyes open. We also have that Earth spot at New Zealand dancing slightly southeast right at New Zealand and the Kermadec Trench, storms making their way on shore and keeping local alerts alive. The 50th Deeper Look episode of the year was posted yesterday for website members at suspiciousobservers.org. Membership keeps these morning news coming and free to watch on YouTube, and we greatly appreciate your support. We have the rest of the world's weather and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 5.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone. Thank <laughs> you.